वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज द रिकॉर्डिंग फॉर एफ एम जी ई सी बी टी वन बायो केमिस्ट्री डिस्कशन देर आर टोटल फिफ्टीन क्वेश्चन विच आई बी डिस्कसिंग वन बाई वन सो नाउ कमिंग टू द नंबर वन क्वेश्चन विच इज लैक ऑफ एल्फा ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ द फैटी एसिड लीड्स टू सो इफ यू मस्ट नो इफ द एल्फा ऑक्सीडेशन इज डिफिशियंट और डिफेक्टिव ड्यू टू म्यूटेशन ऑफ वन और अदर इंजाइन इन दिस पाथवे the fatty acid starts accumulating fatty acid starts accumulating which type of fatty acid it is branched chain fatty acid which is phytanic acid phytanic acid this accumulates in peroxisome peroxisome and this disorder is known as refsum's disease refsum's disease so defect in alpha oxidation Results in branching fatty acid, phytanic acid accumulation. So this is going to be the answer here in this question. Dicarboxylic acid is produced in the omega oxidation, so that has got no connection in the alpha oxidation. Propionic acid doesn't get formed in the alpha oxidation, rather in or chain fatty acid beta oxidation as an end product it is produced. And uh, Lack of alpha oxidation fatty acid leads to oxidation of branching fatty acid. No, as I just now told you, the branching fatty acid is not undergoing oxidation. Now coming to the second question, amino acid which is uh, producing ammonia in the kidney. So we have one amino acid called glutamine, which is acted upon by glutaminase enzyme. Glutaminase enzyme converts glutamine to glutamate and ammonia. This glutaminase enzyme is found in proximal convoluted tubule, that is kidney, proximal convoluted tubule, then hepatocyte, hepatic cell it is found and in GIT cell it is found. In the proximal convoluted tubule, this ammonia which is generated uh, attaches with one proton and this becomes ammonium ion, right? And this is excreted in the urine. So along with the ammonia, even hydrogen ion is excreted out in the urine so in case of metabolic acidosis in case of metabolic acidosis when we have to get rid of excessive hydrogen the glutaminase expression increases in the kidney so which amino acid produces ammonia in the kidney it is a glutamine and that ammonia play a role in buffering coming to third question precipitation of protein is done by all except so salt of heavy metals trichloroacetic acid acetyl alcohol and acetone all are going to uh, precipitate the protein and you must know that isoelectric ph is the point is the point when protein precipitates protein precipitate isoelectric ph is the point where equal positive and equal negative charge is there and protein is there in the zwitter ion Zwitter ion form is net neutral and neutral things are never soluble in aqueous media or polar media in water uh, or in plasma. So at isoelectric pH only you can expect the protein to precipitate. If you go to the pH which is higher than isoelectric pH or the pH which is lower than isoelectric pH, the protein will have some charge. Like for example, it will have positive charge at lower pH. It will have negative charge at higher pH. And at these pH on either side of isoelectric point, the protein is going to be soluble. So protein precipitation cannot be done on adjusting the pH on either side of isoelectric point. Rather, at isoelectric point, the precipitation can be done. And heavy metals, they neutralize the charge on the protein and precipitate. Trichloroacetic acid, they denature the protein and precipitate. Acetyl alcohol and acetone, they remove the shell of hydration and precipitate. So you must know that precipitation of protein is done by ABC but not by T. So answer is T. Coming to next question number 4. The question number 4 is asking you what is not correct. So bilirubin, this is the answer. Bilirubin is not a cyclical tetrapyrrole. Cyclical tetrapyrrole is heme. Heme is the cyclical tetrapyrrole. But when heme opens up by action of heme oxygenase enzyme, it is converted to biliverdin and then bilirubin. And biliverdin, biliverdin itself is a linear structure. And when it is further reduced, 
it is converted to bilirubin that is post linear structure so bilirubin you must know is not the cyclical structure it is the linear structure so that is the answer here all other statements are correct like for example when you see albumin is binding with the bilirubin for its transportation to the liver high level of bilirubin can enter the brain cell because it's permeable across the blood brain barrier and it can results in, result in problem or damage to the brain which is uh, called carnicterus this is called carnicterus so this is also a correct statement bilirubin contain methyl and vinyl group that is also the correct statement so what is not correct is cyclical retroviral coming to the next question for activation of vitamin D, what is the in organs which are involved? So you must know that in skin, first of all, the vitamin D, polycalciferol, is produced, which is going to the liver. There, the 25 hydroxylation is happening on this polycalciferol, forming 25 hydroxy polycalciferol. And that is going to kidney tubules, kidney tubules, and there in the proximal convoluted tubule, the 1-alpha hydroxylase converts 25-hydroxypolycalciferol to 125-dihydroxypolycalciferol. So this is the sequence of organ where this vitamin D is synthesized and then activated. So uh, answer for this question is going to be skin, liver and kidney. Coming to next question, northern blotting. Northern blotting is used for, you must know it is to, northern blotting is done to assess or quantify gene expression quantify gene expression gene expression and that can be done only after quantification of messenger RNA of that gene so we are going to deal with the messenger RNA in this northern routing technique vitamin toxicity causing teratogenicity is vitamin A that is why pregnant ladies, they are not supposed to consume vitamin A. It is supposed to be teratogenic, teratogenic because retinoids, they are important for tissue differentiation and specification. So if consumed in excess quantity, it may result in teratogenicity where malformation in the fetus, uh, unfortunately, will be seen. Now coming to next question number eight, for single carbon transfer, which coenzyme is responsible? You must know it is vitamin B9, which otherwise in active form it is tetrahydrofolic acid. This is said to be, tetrahydrofolic acid is said to be one carbon carrier. So B9 or folic acid is uh, activated to form your tetrahydrofolic acid and this is acting as a one carbon carrier, right? So one carbon carrier. Coming to next question, beta oxidation of fatty acid is requiring what? So beta oxidation fatty acid is a process by which a lot of ATP is generated and you have got four steps, four steps in each cycle of beta oxidation. They are acyl-CoA, dehydrogenase activity, enoyl-CoA, hydratase activity, Beta hydroxy, acyl CoA, dehydrogenase activity, and thiolase activity. Then is thiolase activity. This acyl CoA dehydrogenase activity need any need FAD for its action because it has to generate FADH2 from this FAD. And beta hydroxy acyl CoA dehydrogenase need NAD for its action. So we need FAD and NAD for beta oxidation purpose. Coming to next question, Cason's disease. It is due to selenium deficiency. Cason's disease is also known as endemic cardiomyopathy. In this heart involvement is there in selenium deficiency and it is seen as an endemic disease because that soil is having deficiency of selenium. So all inhabitants who are residing in that area tend to develop selenium deficiency which is characterized by cardiomyopathy, loss of appetite, 
malaise, loss of weight, uh, nausea, sort of thing, and patient died due to heart failure. So this is due to deficiency of selenium. Next question is asking you question number 11. Which human tissue contain greatest amount of glycogen in the body? So it's a very interesting question. They are asking you uh, greatest amount. So answer is going to be the skeletal muscle. So this table is going to help you a lot here. When you talk about the content of glycogen in the liver, it is 4% and in the muscle, it is only 0.7%. So percentage wise, when you see the liver is having more of the glycogen. Extracellular glucose is very less and that is going to be 0.1% uh, only. And uh, we are have to focus only on muscle and liver glycogen storage. So muscle is having lesser percentage, but because the muscle weight is small, total content of glycogen is almost four times to that of liver. Liver is having 72 grams of glycogen stored in it and muscle is having 245 grams of glycogen stored in it. So the question was asking you maximum content of the glycogen and the answer is going to be the muscle organ. Muscle is the organ where maximum number of glycogen is stored. Coming to next question number uh, 12, the protein avidin is going to activate what in the egg? So when you're talking about egg, we have outer albumin which has got L avidin in it. Avidin is a protein and inner yolk. This is yolk. Yolk is having a lot of cholesterol and uh, but you must know that yolk is having which amount of biotin which is vitamin B7. And avidin is having a lot of binding tendency with the biotin. So avidin and biotin, they tightly bind with each other and avidin is heat levile. So when you boil the egg, then avidin is lost and biotin is available for absorption. So avidin, if in a raw egg when you are seeing, the avidin is going to bind with the biotin and it's going to make a huge complex which will not allow the biotin to get absorbed from the GIT lumen. So the person tend to develop the biotin deficiency during chronic consumption of raw egg. So the answer is going to be which is going to get inactivated. The answer is going to be the biotin. So avidin is going to bind with the biotin and it's going to inactivate it. Very good. Coming to, to question number 13. Coming to question number 13. Second messenger for the smooth muscle relaxation by nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is produced from the RG9 by nitric oxide synthase enzyme and this nitric oxide is vasodilator and this is mediated by cyclic GMP. This is mediated by the second messenger cyclic GMP that you must know. So the answer is going to be cyclic GMP. Now question number 14, which of the following amino acid transfer RNA? is which arm is responsible for binding of amino acid transfer RNA to the ribosomal circuits. So you must know that during translation, whenever we are talking about messenger RNA expression, we have got the ribosome in cap capturing the messenger RNA like this. This is going to be the P site and that another one right side, it is going to be the A site. And then we see every time a transfer RNA is coming and binding the large surface ribosome. And this binding at the large surface ribosome is with the help of pseudo uridine arm of transfer RNA. So you must know that answer for this question will be this and this is a very frequently asked question. Acceptor arm in the transfer RNA is responsible for accepting the amino acid for transportation purpose. This is the acceptor arm so amino acid will be added here. This is acceptor arm. This is pseudo uridine arm, which is going to uh, help in binding at the large surface ribosome. And this is going to be anticodon loop or anticodon arm, which is going to identify codon on the messenger RNA. This is going to be the D arm, which is going to bind, attract the correct amino acid tRNA synthetase for charging purpose. So in this question, they were asking the role of pseudo uridine arm. Coming to question number 15, which of the following sequence places the lipoprotein in the order of most dense to least dense? 
See, most dense is HDL and least dense is chylomicron and all other lipoproteins are falling in between. So, from here you start writing from chylomicron. Chylomicron is least dense and VLDL is having little higher density than this and LDL is having further higher density than this and HDL is going to have highest density. So, chylomicron is having least density and uh, that is followed by VLDL. VLDL is having little higher density and low density is having further higher density and HDL is going to have highest density. So, you see carefully in the question whether they are asking from least dense, dense to highest dense or highest dense to least dense. In this most dense to least dense. So, this will be the order and this is given in the question option HDL, LDL, VLDL and chylomicron option B. So, this is the uh, discussion. Thank you very much and wish you all the best.